The words oil and renewable make strange bedfellows, but in Brazil, they're really quite comfortable together. That's because there's growing interest in a process that re-refines used car engine oil so efficiently that the end product can be even better than its original form. We travelled to Sao Paulo to find out more. Combustion engine vehicles. There's more than a billion of them terracing our roads, and they are all thirsty for fuel and oil. Indeed, without lubricant oil, these machines would seize up in a matter of minutes. Here in Brazil, traditionally one of the world's top automotive markets, more than 2 million new vehicles will be sold this year, despite the ongoing recession. Demand for vehicular oil products isn't going to go away anytime soon. Here at the Lawart refinery plant in Lençóis Paulista, in the state of Sao Paulo, there are efforts to make the car industry a little cleaner. Luarte collects used oil all over Brazil in thousands of locations, service stations, quick lubes, factories, agriculture, mining. Last year we processed 140,000 metric tons of used oil. Under Brazilian law, all used vehicle oil must be re-refined. It's part of government plans to try and limit dependence on imported oil, whilst also protecting the environment. It's far from perfect, but the system is improving. The most common destination for used oil when it's not re-refined really is burning it as a fuel. In our view, at this moment, when everybody's looking for cleaner energy sources, cleaner fuels, it does not make sense to burn used oil, which is not a clean fuel. Re-refining is the best solution for the environment. The technology used by Lawart is provided by American firm Chemical Engineering Partners Incorporated. The idea was first developed three decades ago, and the company has been perfecting the process ever since. Since it's first used 30 years ago, we have improved our technology significantly. Our technology is a renewable process where we refine used oil and bring it back to a quality that's same or better than its original use. And one of the most significant improvements is such that we are able to produce API Group 2 base oil from all kinds of oil. Here in the laboratory, technicians are constantly testing the lubricant oil's quality. The process to re-refine the oil is known as hydro-treating. The re-refining process is divided into sections, front end and back end. Front end, the idea is to remove all the contaminants, the water, the light ends and the asphalt, and to collect what we call lube distillate. The lube distillate is sent to back end, where we have the hydrogen acting to remove all the sulfur and the double bonds that we call unsaturation. The result for the process is a very good quality oil that has low sulfur and high saturates. Car ownership is increasing throughout the world, most notably in emerging economies. The company's technology is particularly important in countries where second-hand, cheaper and older vehicles are flooding the markets. Many developing countries are licensing our technology as well because it helps them to reduce the dependence of foreign oil import. At the same time, it also helps those developing countries to control their environmental impacts of burning or wasting used oil. Solutions like these can play a tremendous role in reducing greenhouse gas emissions and protecting the environment. Indeed, they must. Our dependence on our four-wheeled friends is unlikely to slow down anytime soon. Modern humans need it, but let's face it, the environment could do without it. Plastic. It's everywhere, it's polluting ecosystems and it's blighting landscapes. We visit Shanghai, where scientists believe they're getting closer to turning plastic waste into a fuel of the future. It's fair to say that humans have a love-hate relationship with plastic. We're becoming more intolerant of it, whilst at the same time, we're using it more and more. The World Economic Forum says there'll be more plastic than fish in the oceans by 2050. But imagine a future where we no longer see it as a plastic plague of sorts, but instead a source of energy. That isn't such an absurd idea when you consider plastic is derived from oil. If we have the plastic waste in the environments or in the ocean or buried under glass, it's going to stay there for hundreds or thousands of years. So we need to find a solution to the plastic waste and we think converting them into fuel is an excellent way to reuse it. 
Polyethylene is used to produce everything from food packaging to shopping bags to plastic bottles. And with an estimated 100 million tons of it produced annually, it seems like a pretty good idea to do something with it. So what we are doing differently is to use a so-called cloth alkene metastasis uh, strategies. So process involving the metastasis between polyethylene and the shorter alkenes, which are fairly cheap and has low values. So the metastasis between the polyethylene and the shorter alkene will result in the breakdown of polyethylene into shorter alkenes, which are suitable for diesel fuels. This isn't a new idea. Scientists have been trying to crack this process for half a century, but the team here think they may have made a breakthrough. And this process needs a lower temperature compared to the conventional methods. It can degrade the polyethylene into relatively clean product uh, under mild conditions. The end product could be used for a variety of purposes. In our process, we can get the oil hydrocarbons as the major products and some waxes as the minor products. The major products can be used as a fuel such as diesel. But with the recent price of oil at almost record lows, it's unclear if recycled plastic would be economically attractive. At the early stage, we need to develop a method which can degrade plastic into useful product. But eventually, we need to develop a more efficient system which can make the process economically viable. Despite criticism, the team are determined to pursue what they see as a solution to the bewildering levels of plastic waste. So, so far our technology is limited to the degradation of polyethylene. So hopefully we can develop a new methods for degrading polypropylene, polystyrene and other type of plastic. So Joy, we've thought about reuse and recycling within the oil industry. For you, is that where the focus should be in terms of sustainability? Indeed. We've got to learn to be much more efficient in, efficient in the way we do the business and we have to think ahead and how oil can actually help in this uh, transition towards a greener and more renewable world. Uh, we need to be careful in the way we use the reserves that we already know we have and try to use them more responsibly. What do you think about the idea of, of local versus international, of, of modular systems in terms of sustainability within the oil industry? There's a very crucial dilemma in the energy conversation because we often hear governments taking the global approach, whereas in my view at least we should really uh, focus on a local approach. Uh, we don't have the same energy resources everywhere in the world and we also don't have the same accessibility to these resources wherever we are. So we have to think a little bit clever <laughs> and try to find the best solution for one given location, one given situation. As we've seen, efficiency and prices can have effect on the sustainability of the oil industry. What other solutions might there be? Certainly thinking hybrid, so trying to integrate conventional energy resources with renewable energy resources. Try to see the synergies between them and how we can use this process to stimulate even more research into renewable energy, to make the renewable energy exploitation more efficient. And how do you see the future of oil in terms of the global energy mix? Oil will uh, continue playing a very key role in the energy uh, panorama and in this transition towards renewables. Mix is the right word. Oil will be there for many years ahead and will have to be used wisely and will have to be used in such a way that we continue thinking more efficiently and thinking always in respect to the environment and thinking ahead about what oil can do to favour the uh, uptake of the renewables. Joy, it's been fascinating talking to you. Thank you so much and good luck with the rest of your research you, here at Cranfield University. Thank you very much. We've seen how indispensable oil has become to modern life and we've seen the key role that oil will continue to play in our futures. And with technology advancing at pace, all eyes are on the oil industry as it strives to become cleaner, greener and more sustainable. Hopefully we've answered some of your questions and as always you can join the conversation on Twitter at CNBC Energy using the hashtags AskSE and Sustainable Energy.
So it's goodbye to oil and next time we say hello to another energy source with unlimited potential, feared by some and revered by others, nuclear. Tweet us your questions and we'll ask our expert on the next episode of Sustainable Energy. And until then, keep thinking green. Goodbye. goodbye. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.